Are you looking for one of the best image AIs that is also very easy to use? Then Lexica Art might be for you. Hello my friends, how are you doing? Do you remember the days when Lexica Art was a collection of really bad stable diffusion renders? Well, it is no more because they have trained their own models and they are absolutely beautiful. As you can see here, this AI can do different styles, for example, illustration, but also 3D rendering styles. It can do nice ink drawing in different styles, Western and Asian. It can do these amazing intricate artworks, design objects for you in a very sophisticated way and do these beautiful abstract 3D style images. But I told you that Lexica Art is very easy to use. So what does that mean? Well, when you come to their page, you have here a search function and then you can see here all these images that are created by the Lexica Art model. And the amazing thing here is when you click on one of these images, you get information about the prompt used. You can directly use this prompt and that image to create your own versions. You can explore that style. And also with a subscription, you can use these images commercially, not just for your design and art projects, but also to resell these images on stock pages. On top of that, you can also click here on the image icon and with that simply upload an image and Lexica will automatically find similar images for you for the person, for the art style and for the content of that image. Now, when it comes to the rendering process, this is very simplified for you. You have a prompt up here and then you have a negative prompt down here. You can stretch out this area if you want to write more text. So everything is easy to view. On the side here, you have a slider for dimensions that not only shows you the dimensions, but also gives you a visual preview, which is very, very helpful because often these numbers don't really mean much to us. Below you have advanced settings, but in there you don't find very complex selections. You only have the model you want to use, the guidance scale, which explains to you what the value does. And then you have a button here for fixed double hats, but that's about it. When you have generated an image or you find an image via the search I just showed you, you can click here on open an editor. This will load the prompt and the settings, but also you have this image up here. Now, right now, this is only using the prompt. But when you click on that image, this is actually creating variations of that image. Now, here's one thing that needs to be pointed out. It does not load the ratio, so you still need to set the right ratio. As you can see with these images here, where I have created variations of the original image that you can see below, but in a different ratio. So some of them are a little bit stretch but you can also see that the body proportions and the face proportions are correct just the helmet appears a little bit stretched but in the overall design it does still work now when you set your variations to the correct ratio you get images that closely resemble the original but have different details and another benefit here is of course before you create these variations you can change the prompt and the negative prompt so that you can address more closely what you want to change on top of that, you have a history here, which is basically the camera roll. And you can always go through all of the images you have created so far or upscaled so far. You can download them again, or when you mouse over them, you can use them for generation, or you can use them to search for other images in that same style. When you click on the like section up here, you will find all the images you have liked. Now, let me remind that you can use any of them commercially if you have a subscription and you can use any of them for free if it's not for a commercial purpose. And of course, with any of them, you can create variations and generate with this prompt and with that image. Now, let's talk a little bit about the membership and also about the limitations of the service. So as you see, there is different packages here going from starter to pro to max. And this mainly limits the images you can generate per month. So with starter, you can create 800 images. Pro is 3000 and max is 6500. With a free account, you can generate 100 images per month. Now it is very important to note here that every time you click on generate, it will create four images for you. And these do actually count as four images towards your limit, not just as one image as it is with mid journey. On the positive side, if you upscale an image, this also only counts as one image. 
With the starter and pro account, all of your images are public. With the max account, all of your images are private. But you're always free to delete the images that you have generated from the service. Otherwise, stay, stay online indefinitely. And as far as I know, there is no limitation to how many images you can download, even images from other users. So if you run out of images to generate, you can still download images from the page that you like and want to use for your purposes. One thing I very much enjoy about Lexica Art is that the generation process, as you can see here, is very fast. I've never seen any hiccups like with Midjourney where the images get stuck. And of course, the service doesn't use any of your own computer power. So you're completely independent and the service is completely running on a website with a very nicely designed UI. So you can even sit relaxed on your tablet and create these amazing images. Now I want to point out some downsides from the stylistic side. I find that most of the images you can create here have this rather saturated style. Now, of course, when you're creative with your prompts, you can create other styles. So the model is rather open. It can do anime styles that are pretty beautiful. But in most of them, I feel like the images are high contrast and saturated. The model is very good with a 3D look and ray tracing look and hard surface materials like glass, metal or plastic are also rendered very nicely. But a thing that I notice about the portraits is that so far I haven't really seen images that are photorealistic portraits because the human skin is actually very complex to render. It has subsurface scattering and is translucent. So there's a lot of stuff going on and these fine hairs, the fine texture makes it actually pretty hard. And while the the portraits are really, really beautiful. Most of them look either very masterfully digitally painted or like 3D renderings. And as you can see, for example, with this image here, they look really, really good, but you wouldn't confuse them with a photo. Now, this situation is a little bit different when you look for environments, because there you often get something that looks more like a photography. One thing to note here is also that the search does not seem to have any slider for the ratio or any way to say if you want to have a vertical or horizontal image. So that makes searching for a specific ratio a little bit more complex. Also, Lexica now has a strong filter for nudity and not safe for work content. So you can neither find them nor generate content of that type. Overall, I'm very, very impressed with what Lexica can do. And I find that for the quality you get and the ease of use, the pricing is actually pretty good. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah. <laughs>